Lebu Malepa is the trailblazing tourism entrepreneur who started Lebu's Backpackers in Vilagazi Street in Soweto, which attracted lo well, attracts local and international tourists alike. He passed away on Christmas Day due to ill health, sending shockwaves through the tourism world. Now we're joined by Lindy Wesangwanisido. She's the chairperson of the Tourism Transformation Council of South Africa. Uh, Ms. Sangwanisido, thank you so much for making the time uh, to talk to us at this moment. I know we're talking about Lebu, uh, but uh, you come from a family that has struggled uh, credentials and uh, possibly has had interactions uh, with the uh, Archbishop uh, Desmond Mpilodudu. How is the Sangwani family reacting to his passing? Good morning, Desiree. And thank you so much for, for having us uh, on your show. It, it obviously has come as a very sad time for all of us, not just the Sangwani family, but all South Africans and all people in the struggle. My late father, Stan Sangwani, um, would have interacted with the bishop the Archbishop in many different um, occasions. And um, Lindiwe Mabuza, who recently passed away, um, also received the Archbishop Desmond Tutu many times in her capacity as the High Commissioner of the UK when he visited uh, United Kingdom. Um, there are many beautiful stories that we tell, but for now we just want to send our condolences as a family and as a community to the Tutu family especially to Mamlia and her four children. And then this shocking uh, uh, development story of Lebu passing away. He was such a constant uh, a face, a brand in the space of tourism with his amazing innovation uh, in Vilagazi Street. What happened? You know, Desiree, um, we are still all very shocked and I must again convey, you know, our deepest condolences as the tourism community to his wife, Maria Westlund Malepa, and the children and the entire family. Uh, Lebu had been sick for uh, quite a period, most of 2021, um, and passed away uh, after a long period of illness in a Johannesburg hospital. Um, so for us, you know, to receive the news that this young 46-year-old vibrant human being was no more um, is still very hard to even digest to even contemplate and you can see him there in uh, that clip which is currently showing that's lebu as he was you know vibrant young um, full of energy and really inspirational in terms of what he did starting off his business in 1998 as a curio shop um, provider and only later on in 2003, realizing that there was an opportunity to provide accommodation in Soweto, but in an authentic manner. And so he offered his family home and began looking after people who were passing through Soweto, looking for accommodation, who wanted an authentic Soweto experience. In fact, in that clip you're seeing in the background, he was talking to Leanne Manners on Morning Live uh, uh, on the shores of Durban uh, during a tourism, one of the tourism endeavors, just showing uh, what an impact he was in the tourism space. And as you say, his humble begin beginnings and went on to attract tourism, uh, tourists from all over the world. From all over the world, Desiree. I mean... When Lebu started, he was probably looking after one or two people. Lebu, in his current state, as Lebu's uh, Soweto backpackers, can look after over 100 people now. Uh, he was able, together with his uh, partner, Maria, and uh, his other associates, able to expand the family home in Orlando West. He um, added on bicycle tours so that he could take people on you know, cycling tours. And really what he was saying was, he was tired at the time of seeing tourists coming in big buses and looking through the windows, almost afraid to disembark. And his message was really come down and talk to us as the true uh, citizens of Soweto and let's show you what we can, um, uh, you can experience. And so he would take tourists on, on, on bicycle rides, more recently on tuk-tuks. He had a green space and still has a green space right opposite Lebu Soweto Backpackers where you can relax and enjoy, you know, a beautiful park. So what, what Lebu did 
was so unique because he also made sure that the entire value chain of his business was enjoyed by his fellow Soweto um, um, you know, family, not just his immediate family, but friends, associates, and the community. All his laundry, for example, for his backpackers is done locally. His security is provided by a local security uh, company in, in Soweto. His parking services, you know, the neighbors become his partners in allowing people to park in his in, in their yards his restaurant you know and and employing 25 people um it just means lebo was such a visionary and able to identify that tourism could actually benefit not just himself but the rest of his community and provide a transformational experience for guests uh, coming from far and wide who probably thought soweto like many other townships is not a no-go area but changed that and made people realize how exciting, how experiential, mm -hmm. and how warm the people of Soweto are. And just being philosophical, how tragic that one day after another, two really influential people from Vilagazi Street, one lived there, one operated a business there, both pass away. Yes, you know, I, I wrote a piece on my Facebook page and on my Instagram page. And I said, you know, in our African culture, it's often said that a great human being is accompanied by the demise of another younger, sometimes human being. Meaning that when great people arrive to our ancestors, as we believe, they would need to be uh, shown the way by, by, by a, another young, e equally great person. For me, Lebu was the precursor to the archbishop's, uh, you know, passing away. Lebu would take people onto Vilagazi Street, a very famous street, famous because it is the home of uh, our late president, Nelson Mandela, and his wife, Winnie Matigizala Mandela. But more importantly, now in where we are currently sitting as we mourn the archbishop, Desmond Mpilotutu, that is also the place where his family home is. So imagine Lebu, taking hundreds, hundreds, and I mean hundreds of tourists from all over the world and showing them that this was the home or is the home of um, one of the Nobel Peace Prize laureates. Uh, and and so, so significant that one would pass away on Christmas Day, the other would pass away on the following day, Boxing Day, a time when Bishop Archbishop Desmond Tutu would have together with his family celebrated the coming of Christ and so prophetically to be now taken by his young Lebu um, leading him to our ancestors after having really embellished and shown the rest of the world how fabulous Soweto was and what great people came from Soweto. I found it very prophetic in, 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 even though very sad for all of us. Now on the operational side, your work of transformation in tourism he did a lot to support that vision how do you hope to support the sustainability of his business going forward it's such a big and important question uh, desiree particularly in the wake of the pandemic you know covid in this past nearly two years has really rendered many businesses, um, you know, to their knees and, and, and a big blow to many businesses, particularly small black businesses. And uh, in my capacity as chairperson of the Tourism Transformation Council of South Africa, we in the council are constantly looking for ways in which we can support uh, tourism entities, particularly small black businesses in the townships, in small towns, even in the rural areas. Um, you know, a typical case like Lebu's backpackers, if we want to see many more of these businesses uh, emerging, we first of all have to make sure that the accessibility to funding and finance is constantly made available with attractive terms, especially for people who don't have a lot of collateral and don't have, a, a, you know, coming from previously disadvantaged backgrounds, don't have the funds. Also the ability to run their businesses, so incubation, mentoring, um, assistance is something that the council is totally um, focused on together with the National Department of Tourism and other stakeholders in the industry, in the tourism industry. But more importantly, 
I would say and urge all of us as South Africans to really understand the importance of domestic tourism and to get up from our homes and to go and support our businesses and not look at tourism in the townships or in small towns or in the rural areas as something for international tourists only. We need to be the first and biggest supporters of our businesses, our tourism businesses, like Lebus Soy to Backpackers, like all the little businesses that are really trying to, to grow. And I think if we were to do that, we would really now be living up to the legacy of what Lebu would have all been about. Lebu was about transforming his community. He was about bringing on others, inclusivity. He incubated and looked after others in his community. And today there are so many other young people whose businesses uh, emanated as a result of Lebu putting his hand into it and ensuring that there was mentorship and um, incubation of, of, of other businesses. So from a, a transformation point of view, our work is not done. In fact, tourism has been dealt a big blow by COVID. And if ever there was a time now is to really, for all of us as South Africans, to take that shot left and to really support all the small businesses um, all over the nation, particularly township tourism. Let's thank you again for your time this morning and we hope to have you back another day to talk uh, extensively about tourism. Indiwe Sangweni Sido is the chairperson of uh, the Tourism Transformation Council of South Africa.